Hi, welcome back. In this session, I'd like to talk about how to estimate the equity risk premium for an individual company. Now, in thinking about this, I'm going to go back to a core principle that I think makes sense, but people disagree with me sometimes on this. And this is the core principle. I think the equity risk exposure of a company should not come from where it's incorporated, but from where it does business. In other words, if you're a U.S. company that gets 90% of your revenues in Brazil, I have to bring in Brazilian country risk when I think about how risky you are as a company. So that's the principle that's going to govern how I think about estimating equity risk premiums for an individual company. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with a very speedy review of how I think about equity risk premiums for countries. And then I'm going to use that to come up with an equity risk premium for an individual company. So here's the process by which I try to estimate equity risk premiums for individual countries. I start with the U.S., not because I'm U.S.-centric, but because I think the S&P 500 is the index on which I can get the most information. And that's information I need because at the start of every month in the U.S., I estimate what I call an implied premium for the S&P 500. What's the implied premium? It's a forward-looking premium that I back out of the S&P 500 right now. So if I know what the price is that you pay for stocks, I can back out of that the equity risk premium that you pay. So start of 2016, for instance, that number would have been about 6%. That number, of course, is going to shift. February 1st of 2016, that number was up to 6.5%. But let's stay on January 1st of 2016. The base number was 6%. The second thing I do is I check for an individual country. So now that you're not the U.S., I check to see what your rating is. If you're a AAA rated country by S&P or Moody's, and you can pick whichever ratings agency you want. So let's say you're Germany. I give you the same equity risk premium that I have for the U.S. My argument being that you're a mature market and two mature markets can't have different equity risk premiums because then money will leave the lower premium market and go to the higher premium one. If your sovereign rating is less than AAA, double A, single A, triple B, double B, then I have some work to do. Here's what I do if you have a rating below triple A. I look to see what default spread goes with your rating and I can estimate the default spread in one of three ways. I can compare the rate on a dollar denominated bond issued by your country, whether it's Brazil or India or Indonesia, and compare it to a dollar, a dollar denominated bond issue, issued by the US, the T-bond, and that difference will be the spread for your country. That's based on a dollar bond issued by the country. Many countries, though, don't issue dollar-denominated bonds. I could look up a sovereign CDS spread. So these are spreads I can observe in the market. Think of these as default spreads that the market thinks attached to your country. They are more updated, obviously, than the ratings, but they're also more volatile. Or if you don't have the first two, you don't have a dollar-denominated bond or a sovereign CDS spread, I can look up your sovereign rating, if you have one, and try to come up with the default spread that goes with that rating using a lookup table. What if you're not rated? I could give up on you. Oh, here's what I can try. I can try to find a country risk score for your country. There are services that do this. One of my favorite services is called Political Risk Services. It's a Europe-based political risk estimation service. And it gives a number to each country. The higher the number, the riskier you are as a country. What I do is I try to find another country with roughly the same score that has a rating and an equity risk premium. And I give you that equity risk premium. You're saying that's desperation time? Absolutely. I have to make the best estimates I can. So now I have a default spread for your country, either based on the rating or the CDS or by looking at the PRS score and finding another country with roughly the same rating. I'm now going to make an adjustment to that default spread. Why? Because the default spread is what you're going to charge for buying bonds issued by that country. However, you're thinking about investing in equities. And usually equities are riskier than bonds. So here's what I do. I estimate how much risk your equities are than bonds in your country. And I can do that by looking up the standard deviation of an equity index in your country and the standard deviation of the government bond and looking at the ratio. And that's a little messy because it's actually difficult to find emerging market bonds that trade, very, very, uh, trade actively. So I've taken to using a proxy that I use across emerging markets. I look up the standard deviation in an emerging market equity index. I use the S&P, Emerging Market Equity Index. And I look up the standard deviation in the Emerging Market Public Bond Index, another S&P index. And I look at the ratio. Start of 2016, for instance, that ratio is 1.34. What am I going to do with that? If your default spread is 2% based on your rating, I'm going to multiply the 2% by 1.34. I'm going to get 2.68% that is going to become the additional risk premium I'm going to charge for your country. Additional on what? 
on the 6% that I estimated for the S&P 500. So I'm going to end up with an equity risk premium for your country that's a 6% of the base premium for the U.S. plus the extra premium that I attach to you because I think you're a risky country and I'm measuring risk still using a default risk. So here's what the world looked like to me at the start of 2016. So if you look at this table, you'll notice first there are lots of 6%. That's my U.S. S&P 500 equity risk premium, and it's populating countries which have AAA ratings, Canada, Germany, Australia, I'm sorry. If you look at the other countries, though, you notice the premiums are greater than 6%. The red numbers here are the additional country risk premiums I'm estimating for your country that I add on to the 6%. So for Colombia, for instance, I'm coming up with a 2.84% additional risk premium that I'm adding to the 6% to come up with a total equity risk premium of 8.84%. The way I get that additional country risk premium is by doing what I described in the previous page. I look up your default spread and I scale it up by that 1.34 standardized number. So now I have an equity risk premium for individual countries. You'll also notice I have equity risk premiums for regions. So I have an equity risk premium for Europe of 7.16%. You might ask, where do I come up with that 7.16%? I take an average across Western European countries, but not a simple average, but a weighted average. I weight Germany a lot more than Turkey because it's a much larger economy, and I weight it based on GDP. So those regional averages that you see for Western Europe, for the Middle East, for Africa, for Asia, reflect the weighted averages of the equity risk premiums in that region. So that's my big picture of what the world looks like. Let me turn my attention to individual companies. I'm going to start easy first. I'm going to take a company which actually broke down its revenues by country. This is actually fairly unusual. Not that many companies actually break down by country. But this was, this was Mbev. Now before I go there, though, let me explain why I use revenues to do my weighting. There are three choices you have. You could use revenues. The advantage of revenues is it's available for most most companies break down their revenues by region. Second, accountants have had the least chance to mess with these numbers. And third, it's always positive. You're saying, so what? The weights can then be positive, which is a good thing. The disadvantage is revenue might not capture your risk exposure. If your factories are all in a very risky part of the world, or your mining operations are all in a risky part of the world, and you may hedge your revenues. At least it gets rid of the currency risk. You could use operating income or EBITDA by region. The advantage is it's probably more closely tied to value. The disadvantage is it's an accounting number. There might be other considerations that drive why some regions show more profits than others, including taxes. It can be a negative number, which means your weights can be negative, which is not good. And many companies don't break this down. You could even break it down by production or operations. And I'll tell you the one subset of companies where I'm inclined to do this is natural resource companies, because you could argue that your exposure as an oil company doesn't come from where you sell the oil, but from where you get the oil. The advantage is you're now tying the risk to what you're most exposed to, which is where your mining reserves are, where your oil reserves are. The disadvantage is companies don't always break down their operations or production by region. So I'm going to go back to revenues, and as I said, I'm going to start easy. This is Mbev in 2012. They broke their revenues down by region. So basically, those are the, mil uh, the revenues in, bil in millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. You can see that if you look at the revenues, Brazil is about 63.7% of revenues. And the remaining revenues are broken out mostly across Latin America with a chunk coming from, Europe, uh, from Canada. You add up the weights in terms of percent. So basically, the way I get the weights is I divide each country's revenue by the total revenues, the 204 million, to come up with the weights. The weights, of course, have to add up to 100%. Those are the equity risk premiums I had for those countries in 2012. Obviously, those numbers are different today. So you, if you were doing this today, you'd update the revenues and the equity risk premiums. The weighted equity risk premium for MBEV, based on the countries it's in, is 9.28%. See, so that was easy. Well, it was easy because MBEV broke its revenues down by country. Here's a slightly messier case. You look at Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola doesn't break its revenues down by country, perhaps because they're in 70 countries. They break it down by region. And here you can almost do what I did on the previous page using those regional weighted averages. I did that for Europe, I did that for Latin America, I did that for North America, I did that for Asia. So I used the regional averages in 2012, those weighted averages, as my equity risk premiums. They did bundle together Africa, the Middle East, and what they call Eurasia. 
So I included, I, I took the weighted average of those two regions, and that's what you see as my 8.94% for that region. I get a weighted average for Coca-Cola. So many companies break their revenues down by region, and as long as the regions match up to the regions that I showed you on that map, you're home free. Now comes the messiest case. What if the breakdown doesn't fit the regional breakdowns I had in my map? I'll take issue with many U.S. companies that are particularly, I think, or exposed to this particular problem. This is, for instance, Amazon in February of 2016. After I'd updated all the numbers to February 2016, I valued Amazon. They get about $64 billion of revenues in North America, $36 billion in the rest of the world. Okay, 64% North America, 36% the rest of the world. Here's how I came up with the equity risk premium for Amazon. For North America, I used, of course, the 6.47%, which is my updated premium. The reason it's higher than 6 is I updated the premium for the S&P 500. North America, at least as far as Amazon is concerned, is just U.S. and Canada. It's mostly U.S. Then I looked at the rest of the world. There is no rest of the world on that picture that you see. So here's how I'm going to try to compute the equity risk premium for the rest of the world. This is actually a spreadsheet I've attached to this video, and you can play with it. But this has the equity risk premium for all the countries, 144, 140 countries or so, that I've estimated equity risk premiums for at the start of 2016. This is actually the February 2016 update, but the 6.47% is now my base number. So what it has is in addition to the equity risk premium, which is in column E, you also have the GDP of each country in column B. If you go to the bottom of the spreadsheet, you'll actually notice that I've read the weighted averages by region, and I have a global average of 7.97%. Remember what you have to estimate, right? In the case of Amazon, you want to get the equity risk premium for the rest of the world, not counting the U.S. Here's the easy way to do it. Go into North America. There it is right there, U.S. Change that GDP to zero. Now, before you do any of this stuff, save the spreadsheet as a pure spreadsheet, and then you can muck it up, because if you change these numbers, obviously everything's going to change. If you forget to change it back, it's going to be a problem. You change it to zero. You're saying, what is that going to do? You go to the bottom. Notice now that my global average is 8.41%. That is the equity risk premium for the rest of the world. That's what you see as my equity risk premium for the rest of the world for Amazon. So let's go back and fix it. The way I fix it is I just say undo the typing in zero. But this is actually a device you can use. For instance, many companies break their revenues down in Asia into Japan and the rest of Asia. Let's suppose that is the case. The equity risk premium for Asia is 8.01%, right? If you want to see what it will look like if Japan were not there, all you need to do is change Japan to zero. And there's 8.13%. So that's Asia without Japan. So again, let me fix that. So that's actually the way you can create your own customized equity risk premium. So play with this page, which obviously will get updated as you go through. So make sure you get the most updated version. And if you do, you should have no trouble creating your own customized ERP. So let me close this discussion with three suggestions. When you try to compute the equity risk premium for a company, you've got to work with the data you have, not the data you wished you had. You're going to be frustrated with some of the data companies give you. You're going to say, I wish they didn't do this rest of the world thing. They broke it down, but they did not. And as you do this, you have to make some assumptions. Like what? When you use that weighted average for Asia as your Asia exposure, you are assuming that the revenues of your company are in rough proportion to the GDPs of those countries. You're saying, what if that's not true? If you have some reason to believe it's not true and you can base those and you can put some numbers on those reasons, then go ahead and do that. But if you don't, this is the best you can do. Make your best assumption and move on. Third, don't get too freaked out about getting the equity risk premium wrong. You're saying, what if I get 8.23 instead of 8.41%? It's not going to make or break your valuation. Make your best estimates. Make assumptions. Get a number for your equity risk premium. Move on. That's my suggestion. I hope you found this webcast useful. Thank you very much for listening.